So what's going to happen with fertilizer prices? That's a really good question. Rod here at A Better Way to Farm, where we help growers improve yields and increase profits. And tonight I wanted to share a couple things. I was setting out on the deck here at Karen's, which doubles as my studio sometimes. And I was reading my emails from the day, and my good friend Kurt sent me a link. I appreciate Kurt. He sends me good information. And Kurt sent me something, and then I got something else from a, sub a subscription that I have talking about some different things with fertilizer. So I want to talk about both of these for you, and let's do nitrogen first. Let's talk about urea. This article that I was reading, they were talking about the fact that right now urea is 920 bucks a ton. Normally, using urea, and I'm not here pushing urea or any certain kind of nitrogen, I'm just saying this is the story for this. Using urea, they said that a normal application rate in a normal year, it would take about 65 bushels of corn to pay for the urea. At current prices of both urea and corn, now it's taking 104 bushels per acre just to cover the urea bill. I'm not sure that's sustainable. So guys, I'm not sure what the answer is to that. I mean, I know some of you guys are using anhydrous. You know what I think of that. Uh, some of you are using 28. Some of you are using 32. I think that it's time, guys, maybe to start saying, all right, what can we do different? Let's drill down and talk about it. I was talking to Josh today, and he was talking about the fact that he's growing 300 bushel corn on 0.6 pounds of nitrogen. Guys, the difference between 1.1 and 0.6 is an astronomical amount of money. You know, if it's taking an extra, every bushel takes an extra pound of in. And that pound of N is going to be well over a dollar. So if you can just go from 1.1 to um, 0.6, you can save 50 cents a bushel. That's a tremendous savings in your input cost. So guys, you know, we, we talk a lot about this at our Fundamentals of Agronomy trainings. We talk about ways to judiciously use nitrogen and, and from the economic side of it and how it is that we're going to work, how we maintain yield, but we don't necessarily use as much as we used to. So that's the one subject that I want to talk about. Now, in with that article, they were also talking about how everything is going to be impacted by this whole natural gas fiasco. I don't know what you think happened to the Nord Stream pipeline. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, I don't know if somebody sabotaged it. I don't trust Russia. Maybe they did it themselves. Who knows? But here's what I do know. There's going to be a shortage of natural gas in Europe, and those people are going to be cold, and they're going to be angry. And my best guess is, this is my guess, I look for the United States to be benevolent and give them some natural gas. What will that do? That'll just make the price go up here. So our benevolence is going to come with a very expensive price tag. I'm not saying we should or shouldn't. I don't know. But I'm just saying that it looks to me like the, we've got the eye of the storm here for things really to get tight. I want to encourage you that I do, you don't have to be working with us, and I really do believe you need to be making your purchases, guys, and anything that you can take on your farm you need to get. I've been saying that for three years. Uh, every year, I get people who say, well, it's going to be better next year, and my question to you is why? What do you see on the horizon that says 23 is going to be better than 22? Because I don't see anything. I see shortages. I see the trucking deal becoming more and more of a fiasco. I see a whole lot of trouble here, and guys, we've got to try and navigate around those. The second thing that I want to talk about is phosphorus. Uh, you know, I, I did a video earlier talking about that accident where that conveyor belt collapsed down in, I believe, uh, North Carolina and created some havoc down there, and they're shut down. <clears throat> and I'm not going to go into all the details of that, but the more you can find out about it, the more you realize how big of a deal and how bad of a deal it really is. But the article I got tonight from my subscription service was talking about the fact that Mosaic's phosphorus mine in Florida was directly in the eye of the hurricane. It went right over it. And all they said was that they measured the rainfall in feet, not in inches. It didn't say how many feet, but I'm going to assume it was more than two. So they've got infrastructure that's creamed. They've got everything full of water. They've got massive flooding, and they're shut down. Now, according to this article, and sometimes I am suspicious of these because, you know, there's a, 
I keep being told that, you know, this company makes 50% of the phosphorus and this company makes 50% of the phosphorus and that company makes 50% of the phosphorus and all of a sudden we've got 150% of the phosphorus. So that's a little confusing. However, the, this article said that this mine was responsible for 50% of all the granulated phosphorus in the United States. They also said that they're responsible for 12% of all the phosphorus in the world. So what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything improving on the supply chain side of things, guys. I look for everybody just to start saying, okay, what are we gonna do? We have people reaching out to us, talking about different ways to handle the phosphorus. All of a sudden that, that dry broadcast spread that used to be so cheap is not so cheap anymore. And it could be that it's, maybe it's time to get something that's more concentrated. Maybe it's time to get something that's more effective. Maybe it's time that we start saying, all right, here's a better way to do this, and we can save some money. If you've got some interest in that, guys, our two-day fundamentals agronomy program is going to be for you this year. We're going to have a bunch of them across the United States, and we would love to help you because there really is some alternatives here. I, you know, I, I run across guys from time to time, and it breaks my heart because, honest to goodness, they would rather quit farming than change what they're doing. And guys, the only thing that's a constant in our lives is change. You know, things change every day and we can't fight that. It's kind of like, you know, you can stand in the middle of the railroad tracks and say, hey, I think the train's gonna swerve. It's not, it's gonna run right over you. And guys, we're gonna have to probably take a look at some alternatives and I just wanna encourage you to do that. And if we can be of assistance, reach out. We would really love to talk to you. Hey, by the way, we are doing a series of podcasts that are uh, on soil testing. That might be one of the things that could help you. Head on over to the podcast platform. I'm getting ready to drop some more TikToks. We try to drop at least one every day. And uh, if you want to follow us over there for some short form video, and we always encourage you to swing by abetterwaytofarm.com, take the profit calculator and say, hey, what is there here that I can implement to make myself more cash? Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I hope your Friday evening is as beautiful as it is here. A gorgeous sunset, the golden corn behind us, the grass is still green, 69 degrees. What a gorgeous, gorgeous night. I hope yours is just like that. If you're headed to the football game for your high school, I hope your team wins. Guys, we do appreciate you, and we really do hope you're having a better day.